Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, how's it going, guys? Can you guys hear me? Hey, Philip. Facebook. Okay, cool. Good thing you can hear me. That's awesome. We'll so we'll make sure to check the other guys to uh, make sure all the other platforms can hear me. Renjin, hey, how's it going? Thanks for tuning in, guys. Carlos Grand. Hey Rudy, what's up man? Awesome. We'll get started in a couple minutes. Just checking, uh, making sure that it's uh, working everywhere in the mainstream channel and all that. I'm going to paste a few links. Uh, we'll check out right now. Hey, what's up, Darren? Okay, looks like we're 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 working on all the other platforms. So let's get started. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully everybody's doing good and being creative and having fun. Yeah, I don't use Fire Mesh much unless I'm doing like a quick, just uh, you know, quick concept thing. But I, I don't use it much. But I suppose I, I will say you probably want to room or, or put Fire Mesh when you have it in the pose already. It's probably be easier because then you could customize it to that. If not, you're going to have to worry about transposing it and then it might come in in a weird position or you could also transpose it as a full thing. But I will say I would recommend if you're going to do that to try to um, do it via. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Okay. Audio is still good to do it via um, when you're finding how to pose probably better. Oh, you have eight poses. Oh man, that's gonna be hard. Uh, do, do you use Maya like XGen? Because if you were just doing something like that, you could just probably use that, and then if you do it on your base pose, and then you know it will come along. It'll come along for the ride. So here we have my profile, Miguel Guerrero. Here, thanks for joining me in the, in the stream. Uh, I mostly stream every other every other Sunday uh, between nine and eleven. Uh, here's my profile. If you guys want to come and check out some of the past streams, you know we work on a variety of different projects. Um, kind of 3D printing a lot and also doing some higher res stuff like the alien we're doing. We're going to take it all the way to final render, more photo real stuff. And we're also going to print it too at the end. But a lot of these other ones are made for printing. Um, one of my latest projects, uh, which is maybe hard to see, but let's see, is uh, is this guy that I made. So 
So it's a, it's a mask that I, it's a mask that I made for this quarantine stuff, you know. This is the, the final model, so I should get we should be able to get get this stuff uh, casted and molded soon. Yeah, you might have to go Maya because I'm not sure about the fire mesh. Uh, we could potentially explore that today, but I'm, I don't do a lot of fire mesh, so I would probably wouldn't be the best guy for that. But we could try it. Uh, here's so some of the links that I posted for you guys were like my website, magvfx.com, uh, my Gumroad. If you guys want to download uh, the latest interface, well, this is an outdated one, but which I'll be up hopefully updating this week. Um, but it has all my materials, my brushes, everything. In case you guys want to follow along. Some of my collectibles, in case you guys are interested, I'll post those links again. Or, or they're still there, actually. I'll post them later. And then uh, if you guys want to check out some of the past streams, we're starting to gather a few, a good amount. So check those out if you guys have some time. So today we're going to be working on... Hey, what's up, man? It's from Brazil. Awesome. Thanks, Carlos. Thanks for joining. Where are you guys all uh, tuning in from? I'm always interested in uh, knowing that. So here's a, a mask that I made. Um, let's change the color a little bit to make it more. Uh, here's the mask that I made, and it was all done in ZBrush, and then uh, 3D printed. Uh, since I wanted to get the most resolution out of this thing, I cut it right in the middle, and then I was able to just uh, fuse it together with some epoxy clay um, to make it work. And now it's uh, ready for casting and molding. And a lot of the stuff that I did was like also like, you know, uh, what is it called? Light boolean, these guys for the little holes for where you're going to insert the, the ropes that go to the back of the head and that type of stuff. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I also did a prototype paint job. Uh, if you guys want to see that, let me open up a substance so you guys can see. I tend to do a lot of my prototype paint jobs. Oh, let me lower the volume a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, prototype paint jobs on, on substance painter because uh, it kind of gives you a better idea of like what to um, like what to try you know what 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 would I want to do for this type of stuff like what about some of the potentials oh look at that Mike I guess I, I guess I will show you substance painter since it's expired <laughs> I have to uh, renew it today but uh, actually, I actually forgot my Instagram Show you guys that real quick. That's where I have some pictures. Let's see here. There we go. So here's some of the pictures that I did of kind of what I was thinking, what kind of paint job I'm going to be doing on it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, potentials, it's just one of them, kind of a dry brush effect, kind of making it very, um, you know, very strong. And here's the final thing put together. Here's how it came uh, apart, you know, two pieces. Just to see how it looked. But yeah, that's kind of where we're going to be. Uh, we'll be talking about that and, and one, one project that uh, Rudy brought up a few streams ago that I never really uh, <laughs> finished. Is uh is these guys? So you know, just taking a step back and looking at this guy, it's kind of going in the direction that I kind of wanted to go. But I was trying to figure out why is it not what I want, and and I think I just narrowed it down. I just you know was thinking about it this morning, and it's it's the kind of the the length of the character. He feels kind of stubby, even though he's he's long. You know, and even if you remove some of these pieces, like. Uh, like that it's just his something about his torso and his proportions that are they feel too, too short so i think we're going to play around with that and kind of get to you know a more final stage of him and then refine him a bit but we're also probably going to play with um, some mask stuff if you guys want you know kind of we'll block out a new mask and then go through the stream and and show you guys what it looks like in the next stream and put print it out uh the other project that i'm working on as well well, there's a couple projects, but uh, let's uh, load up the alien project real quick. Just give me one second, guys, to look up. And that guy's using HG geometry, so you'll see that some of these things are 
are getting starting to get pretty uh, hardcore and heavy. But that's the whole point, right? Kind of giving you guys an idea of, uh, you know, some quick, some quick stuff, and let's see, and some more, you know, more like you, something you get done in the weekend, and then something you take a little longer. Yeah, it might be that they look too bulky, like the legs might be too bulky. So I think that's that's probably where we're going to be adjusting a lot and making him feel more elongated because I want him to feel like a like a longer bug, like a. Like I lost some of the elements, like some of the things that I was looking at this morning were like samurai suits. Even though these are kind of bulky, they give you the appearance that they're kind of long. Like this guy feels pretty tall, you know, maybe some of the other ones feel a little stubby. So I think we're going to go back and kind of uh, just play around those proportions and figure out what what uh, what are some of the things that I that, that were missing from that. Another uh, thing, uh, you know, uh, that I'm a big fan of is uh, Vampire Hunter D. So I really love this proportion. So I think a lot of it has to do with the legs, like you were saying, making them a little thinner. Um, so some of that. So looking at other things of uh, other other sources of inspiration, another one that's that's one of I'm a big fan of is also Ninja Squirrel. I'm sure a lot of you guys are as well. But this is kind of like kind of what I'm thinking about, you know. Kind of making him thinner, you know. Even though this guy's bulky, he feels tall. So, I think we're gonna we're gonna adjust some of that stuff. Yeah, after taking a step back, you can start seeing that some of the proportions weren't weren't exactly uh, what I wanted. But that's the whole point, right? Sometimes we uh we get to a certain point and then we find out we don't like it. So here's this guy. I started detailing him uh, from you know a couple day a couple weeks ago or. So let's change this color. So I just started detailing him, and at this point, he he's uh you know we can only get him so far in this mode with with four subdivision levels, right? Uh, but the whole point of of having four subdivisions levels, getting to about a million to maybe one point five, and then going back to uh, to HD mode, so you'll see here how things will change uh, in a minute. But also, I have five levels of FHD mode, right? But I really kind of want to sculpt in like level two. And if I press uh, A, you guys will see the detail kind of change and become sharper. See how all of a sudden, like some of that detail became sharper. But you know, I could put it at five and sculpt on that, but that would be insanely heavy. Um, See, what did this one this guy change to? So it goes from seven million Let's see I think maybe we need one more level. So we probably spent a little bit of time just kinda oh this is my duplicate. Where is it? From one million seven million to twenty nine million, you know? So now we're dealing with a lot of lot a lot of faces to deal with. So depending on your system, it could get pretty slow. But now we could get to the not to the nitty gritty of the stuff. I'm gonna start using some of our our tools. One thing I try to keep make sure in mind is also putting variation in the center and and turning off uh, you know something like like uh, let's change this brush to be even smaller, point one. Uh, to change the the center so that the center is not mirrored over and as you can see some of these things are not mirrored over So that way when you actually look at it to the center here You could tell these were mirrored, but you could tell that It, it kind of breaks the illusion of the whole thing of realism. So that's when you kind of want to start breaking some of this some of this stuff Especially of areas of use, you know. But yeah, we'll do a little bit of detailing on this guy and continue him on. But we'll see uh, how far we get. So one thing I try to do is not not to keep my hands straight, just like traditional sculptors and kind of wiggle some of these lines in so 
So a, a lot of it is building up, cu cutting the lines, right? Like kind of like your highways, like your direction of your of your wrinkles. And then the other thing that I tend to do a lot um, is go into peaks and valleys and kind of get a um, a mask for this. Sometimes depending on the HD, it could crash depending on how dense this is. If it's a hundred and something million, but you see, sometimes these guys are not quite working. Maybe they're too. The peaks are too high. So it's a little better. Still not quite kind of what I want. Let's try ten. So I just want to be able to get all the little cracks. You could do what I mean, occlusion, but sometimes it tends to kind of crash. Or also, we could switch to cavity, see what cavity can do for us. Cavity, cavity seems to be working better. So, what I tend to do is smooth it once and go back into some of these areas and kind of just inflate. What you could do too is turn off your view mask. And you can start pushing some of these areas a little harder to get some build up on, on some of this stuff. You know, like in between wrinkles. So once you get a little build up, now we could turn off that mask. And see how harsh it looked? Now we can go ahead and hit them and smooth them out. Because these are almost like secondary wrinkles that don't need to be there the whole time. You know, sometimes you want to terminate the edges. Or sometimes you want to kind of just almost terminate the whole thing. So they blend better. And that's why you can use a smooth stronger and just be kind of more gentle with that. Once you get to HD, you got to, you know, just be more gentle and be more, um, just a little softer and a little bit of a, see, so you start building that up. Some of these ones that I push too much, I push down more a little bit, smoothing them down. But yeah, we'll do some more of this. Uh, but right now we're gonna switch over, you know, because he's been retopologized, so he's all good. See how he's out in HD mode. So that's all the HD resolution we're getting out of this guy, out of the 29 million. But so if we press A, you'll see that it'll go back to regular mode, which is the, the 1 million polygons. See, this guy is going back to between high definition and regular definition. So, you know, we'll switch to that eventually. Uh, but for now, let's, uh, let's go back to our, to our guy here. Let's uh, continue working at him. But I hope everybody's staying safe out there. Is everybody being creative during these uh, crazy times? Feel free to share some screen grabs of some of your work if you want. So for this guy, right, uh, I had him pretty dense. You know, I, I separated the face because I want to work on the face separate. Uh, so I merged all the pieces together, but obviously I still don't want to, I'm still working on all the proportions and design. So one of the main things I wanted to do is to make sure I kept all the groups and everything separate, but I wanted to just have a lower res density because this is just dynamesh. So I wanted to have a lower res density of this to be able to modify it because I'm going to be pushing and pulling a lot right now. So a lot of these proportions, a lot of stuff might break. But if it's this dense, it's going to be pretty hard to deal with, which is 4 million. So one thing I did was optimize it. So here I got a Z remesh version. Much more better, you know, still didn't lose the detail. You know, I didn't have a lot of detail to begin with, but I have enough primary forms. 
So I didn't want to uh, completely lose those, but I also wanted to have some space to be able to modify this. But what happens is the first time that I run this, if I just ran it at the default, um, if I just ran it as, as is, you know, it goes pretty fast. Um, it's not too terrible. But it gives me a result that wasn't desirable. Like it was still pretty dense. And then, uh, you know, you guys will see, I'll compare it right now. Pixel monitor. You know, so it's 4.3 million, so it could take a little bit, but not too long. See how it's going pretty quick. But it gave me something that was way too low. You know, sure, I could, I could subdivide this, but I lose a lot of detail, especially like on the horns and other areas. And sometimes this might be okay to deal with. But, I, you know, something like this might be better, but it really depends on how much detail you're retaining, you know. So let's move this to the side. Let's first let's turn off symmetry. So they both have their plus and minuses, right? Let's turn off that. How much detail are we losing? Maybe we smooth this guy once. He might start looking like the other guy, which is yeah, kind of there, you know? It's not too terrible. So we could also deal with that. But it all depends how much you want to retain. But in this case, if we don't want to retain much, we don't have to. And maybe even that low res is okay to deal with. Since we're at such an early stage. So maybe let's play around with that. So we know we'll have a smooth on it. Maybe two to get us back to that spot. Sorry, just getting some, getting some text. Um, so this is looking good, but one of the problems is that it didn't give us any of the groups. So we need to go back a few steps there and go back to geometry, keep groups, see remesh. Cause we don't want to have to do those manually. You know, if there's, if they're already there, you want to kind of just keep that stuff. But yeah, we're going to play around with these proportions in a minute when this is uh, done and see what we can get done. See how, how much we can improve this design. Here's another one that I was looking at, you know, just how elongated this his body is. So that's something we're going to be playing around with. I'm a big fan of uh, anime. Well, it used to be. I haven't watched a lot of the new ones, but I'm not sure. Is there any ones that you guys recommend that are, are really good? Just be a minute for this, but yeah, I think we have to make the lower legs a lot longer, the torso a little longer. Just I don't want it to feel stubby, you know. How's the music? Oh yeah, Berserk. I think that's the last one I, I checked out, but that was the, the one from many years ago, probably like 10, 10 years ago. Okay, there we go. So now we have our groups. So now we could turn this off and continue on. And at this point, we don't have to smooth it. We could just, since we're playing with proportions, we could start kind of tweaking a lot of this stuff. This is a nice thing if you have pre-existing groups. Just, uh, just those. So let's mask all this stuff. Let's mask that guy too. See what we could do with the legs. So I feel like the legs, yeah, they, they get a little buff, or maybe not so buff, maybe more of a that armor part maybe became too Let's 
There we go. I went a little too small with that. If I go play five. Because we're gonna be doing major changes. We can we can definitely go bigger brush. Yeah, yeah, that old one, right? That one was actually good. I, I really actually enjoyed that one. That was one of the last ones that I was able to to really like uh, check out. So here we're going to be doing some non non uniform scaling. So this is where it's really nice to use like the move topological, right? Because you can start, you don't have to mask every time, but I'm just masking for the big limbs. Sometimes you have to, because uh, it just wants to pull everything. So we're gonna be tweaking this whole Smith section, so it's okay to do this. And if we don't like it, then we do it again. Yeah, something thinner in the legs, right? So now we can switch to our regular move tool. And start pushing and pulling some of these things. And it could be this torso became so thin as well. Then, so a lot of it's messing with these proportions and giving him that thin waist. So this is where it's important to maybe just use this tool and tweak some of these guys individually. See, this is where it gets confused sometimes, but not a big deal. It's because they're right on top of each other, so it would get confused. Why wouldn't it, right? And it's a great opportunity also to make his neck longer. This is what we have to separate these guys. So I think we're gonna have to separate. And you know, some of these other little pieces are just kind of leftover trash from other, from when I was blocking things out. So here we can do to go to sub tool, split, split hidden. So that way, I want to move the whole body. It's much easier because I noticed like the Vampire Hunter D guy has has a very very slim but long neck. Yeah, want to keep him. I still want to keep him very bug like. I just want to make sure that he feels his proportions feel much, much. I guess more insect like because insects you know are, tend to be a little. Tend to be a little longer, especially if I'm thinking about like a mantis, uh, that type of stuff, and you know. Also, feels like it gives them more. Um, You know, room for armor as well.
But yeah, I almost, you know, I almost dropped this whole project. To, if it wasn't for for Rudy, thanks Rudy for reminding me that it's like, oh, you know what? It had a lot of potential, so maybe we should keep going. And it was a fun project to to work on. So and it's, it'll be nice to get it wrapped up for the for the for the stream as well. Get them printed, of uh, you know, get them posed and printed. So now he feels pretty long. Now he's starting to get there. All right, we're doing pretty good. What do you guys think so far? Now if we add armor, he'll, he'll probably feel much better. It could have been too that his hips became a little too uh, too wide. That's probably a lot of it. What it was as well, it made him feel very hippy. Yeah, man. Sometimes it's a good reminder. You know, I have a lot of projects that I start like this that I never end. Like I, I forget about them. I get bored. Like I was telling you guys last time, and then they end up going nowhere, and I just drop them when they, you know, when sometimes it's probably good to revamp some of these guys. Oh, there was another project I wanted to show you guys. I know it's a lot of projects. Um, let me let me show you guys this other one. It's pretty excited for this one. This is an old one too. I was going through my hard drive and found uh, something that I started playing around last night. So this one's probably another one we're going to hit in the stream. So we're probably going to split it to one hour here, one hour there. Uh, but this is another guy that I started playing around with uh, last night. So it's more like a fish uh, tribesman type of thing. Kind of inspired by, like, I think, a beta fish. So this is probably another one we're going to be working on, you know, and then posing them to uh more more fish like we'll probably add some scales and more more fish elements to him but this is another one that we'll we'll be working on okay there we go see maybe you got a little too long but that's the whole point where it's all about exploring design Because if his fingers are going to be longer than what they are now, um, that's that's what I'm thinking about. That's kind of what I want to make sure we we attack as well. Because we kind of want to see the whole picture. Let's change this music. So yeah, now we could, if we bulk him up, he won't look. Uh, he won't. It won't be so awkward. One thing I noticed about this, this uh, pretzel rocks, this music uh, service, is that it's starting to become repetitive. <laughs> Not sure if you've seen the last couple of streams, but he, it's been. Uh, I feel like it's starting to become repetitive. No, you, you guys tell me. So one thing you guys want to do, I, I would recommend is also turning down your, when you're using the move tool, turning it down because uh, sometimes if, if you know, it was started at a 50, if you start moving stuff, it starts to become very wobbly. And the last thing you want to do is have wobbles. So I usually turn it down to 10. Ten. So when you're moving major volumes, it doesn't um, distort them too bad.
But yeah, I think we're gonna we're definitely gonna keep working on this guy because uh, I feel like he has a lot of potential now. Now that we're changing him, sometimes you need to take a break. Take a break for some of these designs and come back to them. Not sure if you guys agree or have the same um, thought behind this, but that that's helped me a lot in the last uh, in the last couple of years. Sometimes just stepping back. Sometimes not for a couple of weeks, like I did with this guy, and almost forget about him. But sometimes a couple hours, sometimes a couple of days, or sometimes just coming back to an old project. And one thing I noticed about a lot of these characters that I like from the, from my past, you know, like these, uh, let's, let's look at these guys so you guys see what I'm talking about. Uh, like some of these designs, right? Their feet are pretty big. <laughs> they almost look too cartoony, but it worked, right? So sometimes you got to go back and look at the character design and be like, oh yeah, it is, uh, there's a balance there. There's a reason why there's a balance there. Because then look at his upper body, how big it is, so... If he didn't have that, he wouldn't be able to kind of balance and stay and like be able to balance himself if he's moving around. So sometimes what you think looks a little goofy is actually, you know, there for a reason. Yeah, I think these proportions work so much better for me. If you guys have any ideas or, or think uh, it's, it's going the right way, let me know also. Because it's also good to have your... I guess for this guy, we're going to change his neck up a little bit. Redo it. Well, oh, it's funny. My clay moved to my move tool. Sometimes something's not working, I'll just shrink it. And then I'll just insert like a new piece of geometry. That's funny, that just landed perfectly. Dynamish is your best friend. Giving them a little muscle, and it looks like pieces to get rid of there.
Yeah, the back could be more like a beetle, and that's some of the references. Let's pull up some of the references that I was using last time for, for this stuff. It's been a while, so this is a good refresher. So this is some of the references that I was using last time. Let me make this board a little smaller. So, you know, kind of looking at samurais and some other insectoids, you know, like this shook nice stuff, you know. So even these guys, they're even though they're, you see how, how lengthy they look. One of the main uh, ones that I was looking at too was, you know, kind of like this guy from Simon Lee. Pretty lengthy guy, kind of wanted that that feeling, you know. So yeah, it's a it's quite the amount of different types of uh you know like like this is probably some of the final detail we're gonna do on on the on those plates. But yeah, it's good to have this reference up too. Yeah, I usually tend to put together something like this in the beginning just to make sure that I have some some kind of, uh, you know, inspiration. But definitely added these uh, Ninja Squirrel stuff, and that kind of helps a lot. Uh, the flickering, uh, what, what, what you flicker? Oh, this thing? Yeah, there's a way to get rid of it. I don't remember what it was. Um... It's one of these guys. It kind of disables that, but I don't remember what it is. <laughs> but yeah, I know what you mean. Where like whatever the active subtool stays and the the rest kind of disappears. It's kind of annoying. I I know what you mean. I split those up, huh? Okay. That's fine. So see, sometimes you just gotta block things out so that eventually you can see, go back to them and then tweak the stuff. Some reason Dynamesh was on that. Shouldn't be, but I'll wait for a second. Uh ZBrush will come back and see how everything got destroyed. That's fine. <laughs> well, that's probably because of zebra mesh. Uh you know, then we could split by groups. Later on we'll start splitting up stuff. But the main thing I wanted to do is adjust everything at once and I have to worry about it. So right now I feel like the chest piece needs to be adjusted. The nice thing, so what I tend to do a lot too is keep a, a copy of my original, you know, before I modified it, because you see that some stuff definitely broke, like those little, I was looking at those little antenna things, and they definitely lost uh, lots of detail so we can always steal them back but the other stuff i'm just kind of just adjusting on the fly and it's still not final so it's okay to for it, for it not to be perfect and broken like that but some of the head stuff we worked on more so i want to keep some of that and of course we have that so let's see it got split so that's the bad one so we're gonna get rid of that guy then we have this one here right Maybe like so.
So let's go steal now. We didn't really want that. Split hidden. So now we got it back. Because some of that stuff we spent a little bit of time on and we, we liked, so we don't want to completely get rid of it. And also, like this neck piece became a two two low res. So let's uh, let's steal this one. Make sure we got all the pieces, and that's where we can turn double to make sure we can see them. We split split that as well. And then we'll start splitting more and more. So now we went back to this one. We could get rid of this and turn double again on to get all the pieces. Just to be something really small right there. Like one face. So now we can delete hit it from that group. And that wasn't too bad, so we could deal with that. Oh, it's going pretty good, man. I feel like we're we're getting somewhere. We're finally um kind of tweaking him. And the nice thing about having all this stuff separate. Is if you duplicate it, then we can move it up and have a another another piece. This is where you can use damp standard in reverse and cut stuff in, cut stuff out. You don't want to make his neck too buff. Maybe that's where you could take his original neck. Who else took his face? I feel so much better. What do you guys think? Yeah, it could be like shark gills. There's no rules. This guy just has to look cool. That's I guess that's the only rule. Just make him look cool. So here we have the old body, which is a short one. If you turn that off. We can work on his back. We haven't done much of his back work, so. This is where we could split some of the stuff off too. We think uh, this guy should be split off. Now we could dynamish that guy. Let's see how dense he is. No, way too dense. We do maybe uh, 32. There we go. This also also looks like we lost symmetry, so we could try to get that back. Let's 
it's only 96 96 percent but that's fine we could always pick a side and cut it up you guys have any questions any anything it's funny because i'm looking at all this samurai stuff and there's nothing for the back side <laughs> but let's look up a beetle Oh, there we go. I found a picture. I guess I keep it pretty simple, but here's one picture that I found. What the back looks like. Excuse me. Um, looks pretty simple. I was thinking it was going to be more broken up into a few pieces, like the scapula parts, but you know, we'll we'll continue on. Let's see, maybe find some. Because sometimes it's good to look at some of this stuff, you know, like beetle anatomy. But obviously these guys are also very, very similar shape. Like there's not a lot of breakup, but we can use that to inspire us. So maybe instead of having this giant back piece, we can uh, change it up and make it more interesting. So let's let's do that now. Flatten it out. Also make it wider. A <laughs> blender model. Yeah, it's not really Blender, it's more a uh, ZBrush, but sure. So I think that works better, and then I, I can see we can add uh, two other pieces here. Before we continue, let's save this so we can compare uh, later on. Make sure we save it in the right place. <laughs> what are those little little icons? It's like a little frog. Is that the little weird frog? <laughs> One thing I like doing a lot is, as the some of you guys know, is appending appending spheres to to use as a uh, basic forms. <laughs> So the nice thing is that we could potentially even make this almost like wings, which could be pretty cool. Maybe they're tucked in inside his, his upper armor, I don't like. Fine, I'm gonna these guys, obviously. At that scale, they're gonna be way too much, so we're gonna go back to 32. Or we could just do 16. There we go. That's much better. More manageable. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for joining. Let's see. Mirror this over. Forget to press uh, I think I like what's happening here. This could be definitely be like wings. The nice thing about this design is that we could kind of bulk this up so that they, it's almost like the wings live underneath there. But also, oh, look at that. That's giving him way too much bulk in the front. So we got to keep those thin. Oh, 
How's it going? I'm good. I'm good. So I see. So this could this could be something something interesting for the design, you know, because I want to keep them thin. You know me, I, you know, I like changing the color of this stuff all the time. So <laughs> let's see what we can do. Switch masking tool. to the lower smooth so here I'm just thinking about what what a beta looks like in the back and kind of what 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 can we do with that to make that work So the sound of my voice, I'm using this new um this new program from uh, NVIDIA uh, RTX voice to kind of separate any fans or anything that's going in the background 3D printing wise. So I just wanted to know what what kind of feedback are you guys uh you guys this sound pretty clear? Do you guys even hear that stuff? So I think this is working. I think this is gonna this is gonna be nice. Think it could be like an extra element, like if he's pose, you know. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, I'm from the U.S., but my parents are Mexican, so yeah, that's why my last name Carrero, and I and I don't speak Spanish, so si hablo español, si alguien quiere tiene preguntas en español, I could help you guys with that too. I was thinking of doing a multi-language um, stream, but I'm not sure how many people will really be into that. <laughs> Especially there's already a few streamers, uh, a few Pixelogic streamers that are doing it directly from Mexico. So, you know, they're already taking care of that. So I think that might might be fine. <laughs> okay, awesome. That's good because it's supposed to separate all the sounds and just have my voice be clear. So that's that's perfect. All right, now, now that we took that out, now we need to bulk this, this stuff up a little bit because uh, it looks like that was going to replace this, but I think not. Okay. I want to make sure his back is not too thin. See, it was it was really real thin earlier. It needs to be able to support that for his lats. Oh, look at that. Awesome. It's my favorite thing that happens uh, for here in the middle of a stream. Uh, the lockdown has been pretty, pretty bad. You know, it's, it feels kind of weird, like living here, like right now, like even going out for a walk. I go out for a walk with my daughter and, uh, you know, seeing people in mass or hardly seeing any people on the streets is a little strange. And, you know, I really like going out going to the park and going different places and it's it's pretty weird right now but i hopefully it'll be over soon or we'll see even if it's a while uh the good thing for me that i i've been working from home for the last year and a half so work-wise it hasn't really changed much but uh you know just everyday life has so it's it's a little weird just you know on weekends and can't go hiking or can't go out uh, it's a little strange that's so why we have these things, you know, we do some creative work. So hopefully everybody gets inspired. I know the first couple of weeks for me were a little weird because I, I felt like the motivation was kind of gone. 
But let's see. Hopefully this saved. Um, if not, uh, just have to do it again. How about you guys? How are you guys feeling? Still mo feeling motivated, unmotivated? Yeah, the second wave is scary, man. It's um. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't last for too long, and, and people get better and find the solution for this because uh, it's it's a little crazy. All right, looks like it saved. Ooh, sorry, sorry for the yawning. I'm not sure about me, about you guys, but I feel like this uh, <laughs> new update, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing, it tends to be crashing it a lot. I think proportion-wise, side, side angle-wise, feels much better. <laughs> Let's see. I think I'm just going to fill in this gap here. Let's uh, fill this up. Let's change this back to five. And I want to turn off back fix masking because I don't want to affect the back. Just want to bulk inside. Let's go 32. Much better. Oh, thank you. Yes, every piece, the, the power of ZBrush and the power of adjusting this stuff is that if you have the divisions, like, you know, let's say I wanted to make major changes for this stuff, you know, I have the level four, and I tend to work in Dynamics, but then I convert it, is that I can go back to this level and make some major tweaks, you know, like using the move tool and like change his face to a completely different face, you know, or if I feel like it needs to become smaller or thinner, it's like super easy to do. And if you have something that was really dense, it makes it really hard. Like you'll, you'll move it around and it'll take a second or two. And then, you know, if you want to undo it, sometimes it'll crash or it'll just be super slow. So I think the power is all about the subdivisions. Hopefully that answers your, your question, Andreas. Yeah, you want to get everything to a certain point. That's why kind of what I was showing earlier with, with this guy is uh the old body. Is that it it was actually the old body. So I got sometimes you have so many pieces, it starts to get uh I think that one, um, you know what, that one, it, it started to become too dense and there's no real detail. So there's no point in really having, having all that density for no reason. You know, we could, we could make our current low res to be that. So there's really no need. See, so even just with one subdivision, it starts to already have the same shape. Excuse me. I got to. Hello? Oh, there we go. I'm back. I guess maybe I didn't mute it. <laughs> uh, what do you mean by mold design? Like how to create molds for prints or, or uh, what, what do you mean? Yeah, 
it has some stuff for 3D printing. I, I use it a lot for printing. You know, I printed uh, like this mask. If some of you guys didn't weren't tuned in earlier. I printed this mask here, but uh, you know, it's just a hollow thing. Uh, there's a few other things that I'm printing. Uh, here, you can remove them. But you could make molds. Uh, I, had, I have printed molds. Uh, it depends uh, really like what do you want to do, you know, like some of the ones I've been experimenting. Are ones like these, um, which I bought material, but uh, lately I haven't been feeling motivated to finish these projects. Uh, this is one that I have in the works. I haven't really shown anybody. I cast it and molded the, the master for a small print, but then I also printed printed the mold. You know, so this is like part A and part B of the molds. Uh, and put it together, and I was gonna pour a silicone in here, and then just kind of um, just pour silicone through that spout. Just you know, but one thing that I really forgot to do uh, was put more keys in here. So. But not a big deal. These are just experiments for fun, so not not a problem, you know. But yeah, you could do that yourself with booleans. My all this stuff is done with booleans. You know. Let me see if I can find a file that file of that. Uh, maybe if you guys are interested, I could show you. Let's see. I think this is one of them. Let me open that up. But yeah, we could definitely go over that stuff too. It just some people are, are here for the sculpting, not for not for this stuff, which is kind of boring. That's not the right file. Let's see. Nope. Um yeah, we'll have to find that file. I don't know where I left it. <laughs> but maybe next time. Uh, but we could definitely go over that type of stuff. Yeah, the pelvis looks like it's, it's broken, hey? No, I'm not sick. I just uh, had to blow my nose. I was sick a couple of weeks ago. I got a really bad cold. Not not Corona, just you know. I get sick a lot. Yeah, a lot of the stuff is not perfect. You see how it's kind of not symmetrical. But we, you know, eventually we could definitely, you know, once we separate some of these pieces out, we we could make them symmetrical. Are you bored? That is that what you're saying? Oh yeah, you saw Sal. Oh, look at that. There's a lot of comments. Yeah, you can use stuff like SolidWorks. Uh, I don't use SolidWorks, so I don't. I wouldn't know how to use that. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure you can, or Maya as well. Yeah, you could definitely do that with this. You know, like if you let's say you had this head and it was uh completely done. Let's see. Uh, you could append a pen or cube. Let's just move that cube up. And move that head part up. Right, you could definitely take these guys. Let's see where's the cube at. There we go. That's what that's the powerful thing about ZBrush, right? That you could take something like that cube and uh that guy. Turn everything else off. Maybe a more simpler scene. Let me import that into here. Right.
And that's how I did one of the Baby Yoda things that I was working on. I made a mold this way. So let me see, this is not showing the right way. That's usually all I do, and then it just works. For some reason, it doesn't like me. Well, I'll go over this eventually uh, with you guys, and you guys can see how it works. But yeah, it, it should be pretty easy. I just don't have the file to show you guys, but maybe I have the baby Yoda one because that's that one should be ready. brush it mold there we go yeah I have the baby Yoda one let me load that up So here's a uh, part one of uh, the Baby Yoda mold. Part two should be here as well. Let's see. So that was some of the keys that I did for it. pieces hmm. there's another file But eventually you merge everything down like eyes and teeth and any type of stuff like that to make it one object and then you use another one too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. There we go. Here's one of them. So here's like uh part part A, which is the ears and the the face part, right? And then uh let's see the other one should be here. So here's the back part. But you could definitely make these these guys, you know. So here's like the solid block mode and they also put spouts so that whenever you leak stuff out and here's the port spout, the main one. So it will be upside down, you pour it in there. You could do a slush cast um, and then get your, your baby Yoda out. Uh, I, made, I made the mistake that if you're using um, latex, you need to put super thin layers and I didn't, I just poured the whole thing in there and left it for a few days. And because it's not stone mold, it doesn't suck up the moisture. So it didn't, it didn't cure. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do again is pour a thin layer, pour it out, let it dry and do that a few times, you know, and then once I do that, it should be, it should be good. It just, I haven't had time. I, I got some latex a few weeks ago and I just, I haven't been motivated to do it, but yeah, this is one of the baby Yoda things that I was working on, but not, not a big deal. That's, you know, we could do that with this stuff too. It just depends the more cuts you have and the more like these type of things you have, then it makes it harder. You kind of want to cast these separate or, or make these guys touch so that um, when you cast and mold them, it's all one piece and also get rid of some of these undercuts because they're, they will be a nightmare. Hey, Andrew, how's it going, man? Got my same last name. Where are you from? Yeah, let's continue designing on this guy. We're doing pretty good. Then we'll switch uh, either the alien or we'll go back to one of the other characters. But yeah, I tend to work on a lot of projects, so that way I don't I don't get bored. But um, hopefully, it doesn't bore you guys as well. 
But yeah, you're right. Somebody that mentioned the the pelvic part is not a. It's not quite symmetrical. You could try to run deformations and symmetry, but I think it only gave us like 98% symmetry. But not a big deal. 6% symmetry found. So yeah, eventually we could just cut it in half and just get rid of the other side. Sometimes it's easier that way as well. This is where we can, if we wanted to do that, let's say we wanted to fix that symmetry problem now, right? And we wanted to take care of it on the limbs and that type of stuff. Oh, for ballet too? All right, cool. I, I, do, I, do I follow you on um, on Facebook? I think I, if, you're, you're a sculptor as well, right? It sounds familiar. You could just do uh, auto groups and that changes the grouping on all of them. So if I turn off uh, symmetry, I'm only masking one side, so let's say I don't want this side. So some of the stuff is not, it's kind of broken. We could just fix it now. Before it becomes an issue. And then some of the middle pieces, we'll figure those out later. But let's say we get rid of those, delete hidden, right? Even though there's subdivisions, not, not a big deal. Then what we could do is split. Now that we fix all the proportions, now we can split these guys back up and then eventually fix. So those are the pieces you want to mirror. This guy is uh, this guy here. So we could duplicate him. Convert the selection, delete hidden, and mirror over. So now we have those mirrored over and it should be, should be matching. Well, it should be, but look at that. They're not, not quite matching. So this is how big he's supposed to be compared to a human. So if a human tried going up to him, he'd probably take him out. Ventura. Okay. I'm in the mission Hills close to the, you know, in the Valley. So this guy has some hidden stuff, so let's delete his hidden stuff, so that way it's only just a torso. And this guy has some mismatching geometry, so that's uh, pretty interesting. See, like even the resolutions aren't matching. So let's try that again. See, it was just there's some kind of glitch. Sometimes that happens, so not a big deal. Well, but the the thing that sometimes it breaks some is uh, moving topological, where you grab something and it, it doesn't grab it quite from the same spot, even though it's supposed to, but it doesn't. So, not a biggie. So it's starting to feel better overall, I think. So let's continue working on him, and then in the next like ten minutes, we'll switch over to alien detail. I know some of you guys are, are digging that alien. <laughs> Start coming to our beaches, yes. What is the shortcut to uh, to uh, cut and select? Oh yeah, maybe maybe on yeah maybe on art station. Do you have a link to your art station? Uh, can you post it? Uh, I just well since you have groups, uh, I just I'm just clicking on them and then hiding the stuff and then pressing uh, delete uh, delete hidden. Which is uh, where I usually have it on my interface up here. Shite hide select. I think it's under um, either visibility. See masking visibility. Yeah, you can go on here. So you can hide and select that type of stuff. But sometimes it's nice to work without the wire. You kind of see what's going on too, but it's kind of distracting. At least for me, it's too distracting to to work with uh with that stuff on.
but yeah, maybe this let's let's save it and see how far we got and how much uh, different it looks because uh, I'm sure it looks pretty different. Then we could go probably uh, work on our other bug guy or or alien. I'll let you guys decide. So sleepy today, I don't know why. All right, so we had an old copy in here of a Dynamesh version of this guy. So we can move him over. Actually, we can do, yeah, we can move him over. So I feel like the proportions have changed for the better. You guys tell me what you guys think. I have to redo some of the detail, but I think overall. Let's see, we move this guy down so they're stepping on the same plane. It felt kind of stubby, right? Like he, he didn't feel quite right. Well, at least not not as warrior as I wanted him to be. So I think this this kind of fixes him. And the back work I think helps a lot. Legs feel much stronger and and less fat, less bulky. Now he feels like he's he's like a he could jump from tree to tree type of stuff. Shoulders could be a little out more, but um, we could probably take care of that now. I guess we'll split those guys too. So I used to have a split hidden up here. Um, actually, I do have it here. There we go. Um, let's give him a little bit more of that. Shoulder-wise, too. Let's, uh, So that's what kind of proportion work we had to do. You know, it's okay to go back and get rid of some of this stuff. It's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, they're like partners, right? Like one eats a lot more donuts, the other one doesn't. But I feel like this brings up to a new realm of like, uh, of, a, of a better, a better warrior, especially if you look at the old guy that he has to fight is uh, this is like the the zero mesh version we we're playing for a while we were doing some poses. So I think if he were to fight that guy, he feels a little more um, like he can beat him up. At least I think. What do you guys think? Let's go back to those proportions from uh, Samurai uh, to Ninja Squirrel. Maybe, maybe we need to add a little bit more. Yeah, looking at this, I think uh, it just needs a little more. Oh, thanks, dude. Appreciate it. But yeah, this is this is the the, the other villain. That, you know, we're working on two characters at the same time, so sometimes some of this stuff takes a while for it to be done. So here's more of the detailed version of, of this guy. Let me hide the other guys. Move his head up, I think. Yep. So that was just like a one we were playing around for posing, and then this is like the more more finished, but still needs a lot of work. So we're gonna have these guys fight, but um, I think we don't have enough time to make them all fight and pose them, you know. But we'll see. At least we're we're just going back and tweaking some proportions to make them feel more finished than than what they were. But definitely, you guys can see the difference of uh, of where we started and where we're at. You know, this feels like his kid brother, maybe like the teenage version of him. I think. Yeah, what's your question about Dynamish? Oh, thanks, Rudy. Thanks, Andrew.
Uh, is there a way to split uh, one part of the mesh with polygroups and hide the next to join them? Yeah, yeah, you could definitely rejoin them again. So that's the important part. It's like super powerful, right? That you could split it, rejoin it again, and then and then go back to it, and then see remesh it at the end, make it clean, you know, so it's nice and like easy to to deal with. So let's see what other things Samurais have so that, you know, we're designed on the fly. So a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, some stuff goes, some stuff stays. Uh, here's some more of the reference boards some of you guys asked about. So one thing I'm thinking about too is asymmetry. Like how can I add asymmetry now so that it doesn't feel just like a mirrored, mirror copy over of, of this whole thing, you know? So we could either change the armor pads or change some, you know, we could we could turn some of this stuff down and add a few other pieces of uh, of armor. Oh, what happened to his wings? There we go. And his little hands. He has little little hands that I wanted to keep. Just to want to connect these. They're just blocking, so eventually I'll, I'll, re I'll actually model them a little nicer. But for now, a lot of stuff was about design, not about uh, not about anything else. So I feel like his armor is pretty good for his head, but we're gonna have to do some, probably some more shoulder pad work, or not even shoulder pads, but um. We're gonna steal some stuff, so let's do that now. Let's see, where's the guy? Oh, that's this piece here. So let's duplicate that. No, we need that, so let's delete hidden. And we're probably only not gonna do this on one side, so let's uh. that side so sometimes it's it's hard to get the angle you want from when you're moving the stuff so sometimes I switch over to the old school The old school tool, because one thing I wanted to do is elongate the stuff. But I like I don't like using this because you have to go through in between. But I like to set the angle and then kind of adjust that. So we're gonna start playing around with some of this on and see if it if it's gonna work or not. Thank you. Said appreciate it. Right, so we could do that. And I need another copy of it, so let's duplicate it. And then we can go forward on the other one. So what I'm doing there, I just kind of kept the, the details, the the stage of where the previous one was. Cause I want to get rid of this little horn and kind of use the same padding. Now we could tweak this to give him a little more padding. Maybe flatten that out a little bit. Let's 
So this is the part that's going to start adding bulk to this guy, right? And straps and then all that type of stuff we'll, we'll add right now. See, do we want a cylinder? Yeah, I guess we want a want a cylinder for this stuff. Oh. Why did I get my cylinder? There. This was a flat cylinder. So let's get rid of that. So here I'm just trying to block out like how they would look like, how much bulk is this adding to it, that type of stuff, you know? It's real simple shapes, but it informs me a lot of like, okay, do I need to make this on thicker or is it thick enough? Do we need this on both sides or is that good, you know? Because this is kind of what I had for padding before, but I think this should just be his muscle, so I need to tweak tweak that. So that it's actually more of his muscle and less of a pad. But if you add a few of these with the scallops, you know, this is where we can throw it up. So dividing this guy. Let's we get rid of his little brother. You know, nothing crazy. I'm just adding bulk to him. I went last year. I was I was there that there the I was I almost been there almost every year. Uh, I think uh, a year or two two years ago I I did a presentation. I was like the main opener for it, so maybe a lot of people remember me from that. They're like, you look familiar. It's like, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a while, but yeah. So as we're just blocking this stuff in, we can steal this stuff. Yeah, a lot of this work that I'm doing now is a lot of it um, kind of fun stuff that I do on the weekends, you know, and part of the, you know, just continuing to develop my character design skills. But a lot of the work that I do on, on my actual job is either for films or, or new tech or, you know, commercials, that type of stuff, working on characters. I know some people, it's like, what do you do for, for work? That's kind of, it's kind of my, what I do. It starts to get bulkier and bulkier, but good thing we toned him way down so we can actually add all these pieces to him. Okay, who who's your coworker? That's 
talk to a lot of people. That's why it's it's hard for me to remember. So this one, it's important to sometimes, um, you know, right now they're symmetrical, but there's different poly groups. You're visible. So when you do one, uh, now when you're actually doing this, it's, it's actually doing it to both. Sometimes that happens, not a big deal. So these are more like his um, his lat his latissimus dorsi than than this part should be the sides. See the same thing with that guy. Visible. Yeah, it's pretty chill uh, stream today, so nothing too crazy today. Just kind of going back to some old designs. See how bulky he's getting. Yeah, we'll go, probably go start detailing some alien stuff right now. Is uh, I know a lot of you guys came for that. Sometimes I steal pieces and then kind of recycle them over. And these are just placeholders, so just keep that in mind. They seem very coarse. Not a big deal. They're just placeholders. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's all good. Totally understand. Um, some of my favorite creature designers. 
it's tough. Uh, for me, a, a big inspiration is uh, Simon Lee. He's one of my favorites. He's a really cool guy, really awesome guy. You know, it's also like Rick Baker. There's, um, you know, Carlos Guante, big inspiration. But a lot of the stuff that I I, I get inspired, I was like uh, nature, you know, just like insects. Insects are one of my favorite things. Uh, or, or also old comics. That's That's another big inspiration for me. I think for me, old comics like Spawn, uh, a lot of the image, you know, not, not so much the Marvel stuff, more of the image, some some Marvel stuff, you know, like Wolverine and stuff. But I tend to stay shy of that because when I was working in a lot of this film stuff, I was working on those movies, so I tend not to do that any fan art, you know. But those are those are my big inspirations. Books that I recommend, um, it's a, it's a couple different books, right? There's like one, I, I look at a lot of Japanese stuff. So Takeya stuff, like, like this is one of the main books that I have right now that I bought uh, recently, or it's been here, sitting here for a couple months now, but I hardly seen it. Uh, but this is the type of stuff that I collect for reference and inspiration or also like anatomy for artists, anatomy for sculptors. Those are pretty good. Those are like the main things that I usually that I usually look at, but nature is probably my, my biggest inspiration. Yeah, there's a lot of really awesome character designers out there. You know, a lot of them are, are you know, French, um, uh, who is, uh, John Baptiste Mong. That's one of them. Uh, here, here's a few, few, few ones that I have, I have for the last year I, I've been, really digging i'll show you guys some of these guys aries is one of them then there's like aries colacontes those, those guys are, are pretty awesome i look at a lot of traditional traditional but this is like one of the ones that i, I really like it's less for the real more on the fantasy realm but i really like the the designs you know like the, the proportions on them also this guy here I think what I like about them is that they really tell a story. Like, this guy's very good at telling stories, especially with, like, little creatures, you know? Like, why is this guy riding a mouse, you know? But it's I think it's it's pretty important and really, really cool. And that's something that I'm trying to implement to my work now, more story, less... Yeah, it looks cool, but what it, why? what's the purpose, you know? Uh, I won't say anatomy. Let me see if we find it. You can find a lot of it online. You know, this is like one of the ones that I would recommend if you're really studying anatomy. This is probably really helps breaks breaks things down for you. So I will say this is a, a really good book that I would recommend. You can find a lot of inserts in, of, of this stuff on uh, Pinterest. Let's see. Let's see if we can find some of this stuff. Yeah, so you'll find a lot of stuff for free. If you know, I would recommend buying the book, but if you can't afford it or you can't find it, I would say a lot of this stuff really helps looking at this type of stuff. For the breakdowns, anatomy wise, I will say this is this is really good stuff, you know, blocking out your stuff or even such a basic forms, you know, like therefore that you fuse them together. And that's kind of what I tend to do. I tend to do a lot of blocking stuff and then merge it together later. But I will say this is uh, pretty good for anatomy, um, at least a good starting point. Therefore that you could do other other things, workshops, and take it to another level. But this is a good starting point. Yeah, Sky Eden is another one that's really good. Uh, he's I would highly recommend him as well. Um, there's also anatomy tools and that type of stuff. So, but those are more like in-person workshops, which I would highly recommend you going to or or going to any any type of workshop.
So one of the things that started becoming apparent here is that the joints uh, kind of weak. So we need to make the bulk those guys up a little bit. So he doesn't feel as bulky as he did before. We also need to add him, give him a little bit more. It's not that we got rid of that. We need to kind of change some of this. Be better anatomy because right now that sucks, but not a big deal. It's all about designing. Well, at least for me, a lot of it is about designing. Right to give him an elbow joint as well, but I have to do that with another piece of geometry. So keep in mind that I'm going to fuse this all together and then adjust the, the topology to be nicer. Yeah, Michael Hampton has some really nice stuff. He's one of the ones that was in Anatomy Tools. Uh, Teaches, I think, level one. Uh, his 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 art book uh, is really good too. Really informative. There's so many great, uh, you know, anatomy. Um, there's uh, Ray Busto as well. There's uh, David Simon. There's uh, all these guys. You know, there's so many. And I recently just found one last night that actually I saw somebody post on the, on their website on their Instagram, which actually is really nice because. He has a guy, he's drawing on top of his actual musculature and he makes a move around and shows you where those muscles are actually going. Uh, I, I wanted, I'll probably post some of his stuff later on my Instagram to, you know, in case you guys want to check it out. I don't remember his name. He's a, I think a Taiwanese guy, but it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's uh, really good stuff. There we go. Now he's starting to feel more, uh, Samurai like, I want to say. Get some more of those proportions. Well, this guy's just got a tap somehow, not a big deal. I just got an idea of making these guys a little more, more of a design element, you know. So it gives him the bulk without giving him the actual bulk on his body. And it could also be used as some cool. When he's when we pose him, he, we could use him as secondary motion. So it feels so it kind of like pushes the the pose a little more. I guess we'll just continue with this guy because there's not enough time to go back. 
uh, to do details. But uh, let me show you guys some links because I'm going to start doing uh, my own Twitch channel, uh, which I had working for a while, but I haven't actually done much with it. So I'll probably start uh, doing more um, streams during the week, like maybe one during Wednesday or Thursdays night, Thursday nights. So in case you guys can't make it in the morning, you know, I'll continue some of these projects there or, or continue just on like a specific theme. Uh, but yeah, those are some. So feel free to follow me on uh, on Twitch. Uh, I'll set it up with my YouTube channel as well. How about you guys get notifications if you guys uh, are interested in checking that out? So here I'm just thinking of the simple shapes, how they're flowing from each other, you know, like the back part, to the helmet, to the sides of the helmet, you know, kind of changing angles, looking at the side, it felt like he had no brain. So I thought to kind of stick that out, maybe make this go into that, this helmet go into this part here, like tuck in, but keeping that curvature. So it's more like a little elegant kind of way of doing it. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, Josh? Well, thanks, man. Just going back on some old designs and trying to trying to get these guys wrapped up so they don't haunt me when I'm uh, looking at my hard drive and see like there's like 50 projects that I, I never finish. And the plan for this one was to get it printed like a full like one six scale. So that could be cool. I can't wait to finish that. I, I started working on some one six scale stuff, but I haven't wrapped that up. So that's the next that's in the next things to wrap up. As well, some likeness that I'm working on and more mask and oh you know, a little bit of everything. Yeah, spring cleaning your hard drive. Pretty important. Yeah, I started doing that with my office, but I haven't done that on my hard drive, so I have to continue. I feel like it needs to also have some kind of belly protection. So that's another another big piece that we're gonna probably start adding uh, that it's kind of missing from this. Especially if he has those little arms, he has to protect those guys. So there's a couple ways that I do this, right? Uh, depending if you have subdivisions or not, like let's say subdivision level two is okay. I'll delete lower. I could either just go up and a new object or uh, do an insert brush, an insert uh, mesh, you know, and start messing around with that. So there's many ways you can play around with this stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You just ignore them and just get more hard drives. Uh, that's what usually what I do. I'll just get more hard drives and then eventually I have like 20 and you're like, I should probably clean those out. I'm a, I'm a, I'm at fault when it comes to that. I, I'm so lazy to go through my drives. I do eventually, but man, when you start getting way too much stuff, it becomes kind of a hassle. But yeah, for a while there, I would just buy hard drives because they were so cheap. It's like, why not just uh, keep buying more?
little bit more resolution. See, I forgot that I had a. <laughs> this is part of one of the meshes, so let's split it off. Yeah, we're almost done for today's stream, but uh, at least we got this guy up to a pretty good spot. So we'll probably continue on uh, him next time. Let's wrap him up and then uh, call it a day. Uh, no, I'm not Filipino. I'm uh, more I'm Mexican. What makes you say Filipino? Because uh, the name or do I look Filipino? Maybe I look Filipino. I, I've been told I look Filipino before. But yeah, I really appreciate you guys joining uh, the stream. It was a uh, fun. We know we started working on this guy. We um, talked about a few other projects. So next time we'll we'll continue working on this stuff, and keep having fun. Or maybe next time this guy will be done. Next time you see him, it'll just be posed and ready to set up for printing. But cool guys, really appreciate you guys joining. Um, you got some of the links that I posted, so you guys can uh, check that out. Keep keep up with uh you know instagram i post there a lot feel free to follow me there and then if you have any questions feel free to send me any any messages through there or if you want some feedback i'll, I'll help you uh, with that as well so uh yeah well thank you guys really appreciate it uh, hopefully i'll see you guys next time oh it is very common oh interesting i should go to the philippines <laughs> Well, once this craziness is over, right, with the coronavirus. But yeah, guys, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I'll see you guys uh, next time. Press those links again just in case you guys missed it. Yeah, stay safe. See you guys later. <laughs>